Hey guys, good morning. Um, how are you doing? Um, I know I've been promising to do this video for so long and somehow I've been a, a bit overwhelmed with work and I've not been able to do it. But then I came across this video that I did a few years ago and it's perfect for the class that we said we're going to do. Remember that we're supposed to learn how to do a breast cut, which is a princess um, that bustier. Like something you can do a peplum under or do a flay or um, complete as a dress, but it's very explanatory. It doesn't have um, the sewing technique, but if you already are a beginner, you should be able to fix that and it would uh, meet the need that you wanted it to meet. So um, if you're joining us for the first time, please subscribe, hit the like button. Don't forget to show your friends this video and um, have fun learning. Thank you. My name is Patience Agbisi for Try to Wipe It. Well, good morning. My name is Patience Agbisi and I know I've been promising a free tutorial for a long time. So this morning I'm going to show you how you can make um, the top of a dress, especially dresses that you'll need to add um, the peplum under or need to do a pleat or a kissing pleat or whatever you need to do under. So um, if you have friends who want to learn this, now is the time to tell them to join this and then we can go on. I'm waiting. I'll give you 60 seconds, then I'll begin my explanation. Anybody that comes can pick up from where we have gotten. Okay, now, so this is my lining. And what I have done is I have been able to iron my soft gum. This is a soft gum to the lining. So that's the lining. This is a soft gum. After gumming, I had to bend into two. So whatever measurements I'll be doing will be divided by four, bearing in mind that this is the beginning, um, this is the frontal of this thing we're about to do. Um, so I'll start now. So um, I'm looking for my measurement book. Here's my measurement book. I need to get the measurements of Mommy Gabby. Now, um, this is assuming that we all know that this is the shoulder. So we're beginning to measure from the shoulder. Usually when we take our measurements, what we do is we place our um, tape from the shoulder to the breast point. The breast point is um, the approximately where the nipple is. Then we do the under bust, which is um, approximately under your bust. Um, usually the metal under your bust, if there's metal or right under your bust where your bra ends and then we do a half length. Half length is the tiniest part of the waist which should be waist but we call it the half length. So I'll start by taking um, the measurements. So here we have our breast point is 12 so I'll mark 12. On the bust is 15.7 and we go 15.7 then her half length is um, 19 so we go 19. Then I add half an inch under for sewing allowance. I'll do the same thing further in. So we have straight lines, 15.7, 19, and then half an inch. So I'll um, make sure that my lines meet. So I get straight lines. So this is my breast point. This is my on the busts, this is my half length, and then this is my half an inch sewing allowance. Now, having done that, I need to explain that usually when we take measurements, depending on how much of um, your round bust is, how much your bust measurement is will determine what I'm about to do next. So for anybody whose um, round bus falls between 30 to 40, the measurement I'm about to take here will be six and a half if the round bus falls between 30 to 40. If it's between 40 to 50, what it will mean that is, I would have to add half an inch, which will make it seven inches. If it's 50 to 60, I'll have to add, add another half an inch. 
So, but because this round bust is 40 and a half, what I'll do is um, 7 inches. Having put my 7 inches, I'll go back 2 inches and then half an inch. You'll understand why we're doing this in a minute. I'll do the same thing so I have straight lines. 7 inches, 2 inches and then half an inch. And then I'll do the same thing here so that my lines are very straight. So now I join my my measurements. I have straight lines. I go straight up. I do that for the two inches as well. And then I'll do this again. Now this is it. So I'll go Remember I said you would understand in a minute why I would have to rule these lines. I would have to put my ruler now from under the bust line and make sure that it meets exactly half an inch above, which is the breast point. And then I roll straight up. This will be my center piece of my breast cut. This is what it will look like. Sometimes, depending on the measurement, this line might end here, it might end here, or it might go further behind where this line is. Just ensure that this point and this point meet exactly at the point of the measurement, and then I'm going to do, draw my breast point. Now, a lot of people ask how I'm able to achieve this, um, drawing the breast point. I know my clients. I've seen them physically, so I can tell what their crop looks like. And this is what I do to achieve this conveniently. I measure whatever I get from under the bust to the breast point. In this case, what I have is 3.7. And then I make sure that I have half an inch less than whatever I would have at the bottom here. Which will mean it should be 3.2. But for a very busty person, this might not work. That's because a bustier person, by the time they wear their breast, their, their, their bras, the bust will be further up. But for somebody who has an average um, breast, your breast is fuller on the bottom than on top. So if I'm going to measure the same thing I get here as what I get above, I'll have some free flow above the breast cup. And so when I finish, the breast cup will not sit perfectly on the person's body. So this is what I do. I make sure that it's half an inch less than whatever I would have gotten under because the breast is fuller down than above. Now this is just really hand. When I started learning to sew, it wasn't easy to do this, but over time you make mistakes and you make corrections and you get better at what you do with each time you cut. So I'm just going to affix some pins. My videos on boss. No. Okay. So I'll just put um pins to hold the points like this before I start cutting. So that's Okay. The reason why I make sure that I put pins is I don't want to finish sewing and realize that I have um, some excesses at certain points that don't add up. So this is what I will just do and then I will cut this out. So now I get to cut. So, I remove this excess from the bowl because this is what I mean. This is my shoulder, and then I cut down. And this is. Point. 
So when I cut that and I join, it's going to add up. It will all look like magic, but in short while you understand exactly what I'm saying. So I go cutting this out too. So now this part I'm taking out is just the dart. Notice how this part is smaller because that's the part that has the breast. And notice how this is big because of the proportions of the breast to the waist. Then I'm going to take off this as well. Now this is what I do. I notch the points of the breast point so that when I'm joining it's easy for me to know where the breast points meet from the middle and then the other breast part of the cut. And then I do the same for the breast point. So what I simply do is I'm going to join this and this before I put in my measurements. And in joining this what I do is I, I would approximate half an inch because that would be what I'll be requiring for my sewing allowance to join. Half an inch all the way. When we're doing this, we don't assume that, okay, we're able to cut this out. We just assume that this is as good as wearing the dress on. So you can't um, assume that uh, I'm going to cut out half an inch or I'm going to do this. There's no assumption when we're cutting. Because everything you take for granted adds up eventually in what you're sewing. Because what you consider as half an inch, if it's um, added into four places, will give us two inches extra. We will not know where to throw that away if we don't work it into our measurements so I'm done with the upper part of the front so I go to the lower part now a lot of people ask me why like why why I choose to begin from the middle point that's because that's the best way to go if I went from um, the top it's likely that by the time I get to the breast point my measurements would have changed the points will not meet where they ought to meet. So I choose to begin from the top, not from the bottom, from the middle, not from the top and not from the bottom. people who say well when I'm sewing I would not know how to measure half an inch because I don't use an industrial mach machine the advantage I have with an industrial machine is it has some measurements on it so you're able to get accurately what quarter of an inch is what half an inch is and what a full what a full inch is so what you would need to do in that case is to mark with chalk stating where your half an inch is when you, when you begin to sew now having done this this is the time to enter my measurements so I measure my, my bust is um, 40 and a half. So I go 40 and a half on my tape, divided by two, and then divided by four. So um, this is it. And then I add two and a half inch sewing allowance around the bust area. And then I go on the bust, which is my upper waist, the three and a half. I divide it into four as well. I place it from this point to wherever I get, and then I add two inches as sewing allowance here. And then the lower, um, lower waist is 36 according to this measurement. And so I'm able to do this as well, divided by four. So this is what now a lot of people would have asked how why did i put two and a half inch here if i had put two inches it will mean that when i'm cutting it 
it will now be bending inside and we don't want to have that usually this is what it will look like now i enter my shoulder from here my shoulder is 14 and a half so what i'm going to do is 15 because when i come to dress the shoulder after i have finished sewing i'll be able to get that then i do the six and a half is what i use for average sized people why six and a half you ask i've been sewing for so long and um this was not something i learned from somebody over time i have had to work and then from learning and relearning and unlearning certain things i learned i had come to get something that works better for me and my clients this way most times when i finish we don't have um, issues of um, fittings the clothes fit perfectly especially if you take the right measurements and you take the measurements yourself fittings the clothes fit perfectly especially if you take the right measurements and you take the measurements yourself so i take off this excess from here i cut it out and then i cut out my measurements and voila what we have is the front of our dress now depending on how they want the neckline we'll now decide how to cut the neckline usually what i do is for an average size person what i do is four inches it doesn't matter whether except they want kino if they want kino then we can go six inches because then it will be kino and then if i want high waist I go another four inches here. High neck. If I want high neck, this is what I do. Now, let me just um, make this easier for um, times when you would have to add a yoke that's a shear over the top, or you need to put another different material. What you simply do is what I do, not what you simply do. There's no one way of doing anything, but this is what I do. I simply measure from the shoulder. If the person isn't so busty and they want to have a little cleavage show, we'll go eight inches if the person is conservative and you don't want their cleavage showing we go maybe seven inches and we just simply go if the person wants a sweet half this is what we do and go down this is our sweet heart if they want straight cut we go like this and then we go ahead to do this we have our neckline then we have our yoke. So whether we want a sweet heart or a straight cut, it's achieved either way like this. So what I simply do is I cut out this, I cut out this. This helps me to cut what I need. But when I'm cutting, I make sure I add half an inch in allowance to the actual material because we're going to be throwing this away and we're going to be doing that. And that means I see a lot of people sew their own and then when they finish, they now sew it over. I don't do that. From when I'm sewing, that we'll do that another time. I'll show you how I fix my clothing and have my good, perfect um, finish that people turn and they wish they can wear their clothes from inside. So this is what we simply do. But because we're not doing all of this, this is a wrapper. We're not adding any yoke or anything. And because it's high neck, I'll just simply remove my four and four inches. Remember, four inches that way and four inches down. And voila, this is the front. This is not my measurement, that's what I has this, it's busty. And so this will fit perfectly. And then, but that's why I cannot make a, a dress for somebody's, um, for some other person than that person's measurements. Body types are different. That will have long torsos, um, lo lower, um, lower body, longer lower bodies, or shorter lower, um, higher um, upper part of the body. So um, for instance, now I'm not busty, I'm big. There's somebody whose round measurements will be the same as me, but they're slim because they're busty. So I will not use my measurements to make for them. Because when I'm making their crop, I'll have to make it bigger, considering the fact that their bodies are not big. When I'm making my own crop, I'll have to make it smaller, knowing that my upper body is big and I'm, I'm not busty. So if I make a big crop for myself, then it will mean that my clothes will be having big cups and I don't feel into it perfectly. So we have our front. The back is the easiest part. <laughs> Somebody will disagree with me. But the back is actually the easiest part. 
it's easier to cut the back of the dress and the front. It takes less time and less work. So we have our sorry, um, we have our um, lining ironed again. Remember, everything you cut is divided by four. That's because we fold from the middle and the front is assumed to be two parts. The back has into the two parts as well. Now what I do is normally people would put two inches for their zip allowance, but I simply use my ruler. It has worked so far. So I simply put my ruler and rule straight. Now when I'm sewing for somebody whose um, round box is 40, I do this five inches for the back from the point of the zip to where I remove my darts. So I go another five inches and then another five inches. This is only to have straight lines. I want my lines always straight, not bent. So I put several points and then I join them. I connect them. So this is it now. I bring the front of my press and place it and this will be my points. Okay. And then I will straight line. Now when I'm doing this part, I also consider, I also factor into doing this, the fact that some people have big um, backsides and some don't. And based on your backside, it, de it determines how deep your waist is behind. Mm -hmm. Like so when I'm cutting a dress for myself, my dart would have to be bigger at this point than some people who's butts are flat wow. because the difference between their waist and their butt won't be as much as mine so this is what i do i know this client and i know that she's not so big below so what i do is this a lot of people ask me how do you get this measurement and i say again this is something you gain with experience but to be on the safe side ensure that every time you take your dart this is not more than one and a half inch whatever you get here and this is one and a half Except if the person is really huge on the back side. So I put my pins. I told you the back is usually the easier. So it doesn't waste time. And then I go cutting this down. So let me just do a little bit. It doesn't hinder my work. This is useless to me. So I cut this out. So I not here. So that I can tell that this is the lower part of the body, so I don't mistakenly um, turn the upper part to mean the lower part and then vice versa. So having done that, I'll simply connect this half an inch again like we did with the front. And in this case, they don't have to be too close because it's back and then it doesn't have curves, they're just straight lines. Unlike the front that we have so many curves, we have a long curve that we have to ensure that we do the right thing. This is way easier. Now this is it. I place the front part beginning exactly from where the zip should be. Because if I put it like this and I do, it will mean that what I have cut is useless. Because there's no way to put the zip. So ensure that these lines um, meet here. And then I 
ensure that these two meet here and then now this is if the person wants a low back then you can go on to do a very low back but this person usually doesn't like too low to expose their backs so this is what we we'll simply do we'll cut out depending on how comfortable you are you choose where you want to begin to cut out from usually i cut from here ensure that the follow they're exactly the same and then now there's a part of this that i need to explain there are people who have a lot of um, i don't know fat around their lower arm from behind when you want to cut you would you usually know your client's body so you know whether they do or not if they're slim you cut exactly at this point if they're not and they have that you would just go not too much depending on how big the person is some people can go as much as this but usually this is what i do because i know this clients and that's why i insist on taking my client's measurement myself because there are certain things I would like to know for myself. I would not um, trust some other person's judgment as to whether or not that will work for me. So this is it now. And while we're done cutting the front and the back, what I need to do is I would separate every piece and then copy it on whatever fabric I need to. I'm hoping that someday soon I'll show you how I fix my clothes and then you're able to see how I do my finishing and why it is as, as neat as it is when I'm done with making my dresses. I hope you learned something and um, I hope we do this soon again. Thank you. Get your friends to watch and we can learn a whole lot on this platform. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. Is this no 